the students will get mad. I think this is probably the core of why people hated me as a TA. Undergrads, it's not that deep. Honestly, this entire video is just steps on how to not annoy your students. What's up, y'all? It's Afuiko. Today, I want to talk about some of the big mistakes I made when I was a TA and some general tips for being a good TA. And a lot of these tips are based on actual views that I've personally gotten from students. They roasted me. I don't usually say what schools I go to because it's irrelevant to the conversation. Obviously, I don't want to get taken out by a billion dollar institution. Specifically here, I think that you can get a great TA experience and learn a lot regardless of what school that you're at. But let's just get into it. You're tripping, babe. I know you said you Recognize what you're in it for. Are you trying to be a TA again? Is this the only TA ship that you'll ever have to do? Are you TAing because you're being forced to TA? You want to TA for this professor again? You really have to think about what is actually motivating you to be a TA. If you really want to be a TA again, you can focus on making that professor's life as easy as possible because professors will rehire TAs that they know they can trust. If you really want to learn how to be a good TA and learn how to be a great teacher, then maybe you want to focus on learning the course material and focusing on your teaching style. You really need to think about what's your main priority and focus on that because at the end of the day, there's a lot of requirements for being a TA and you want to spend any of your extra time focusing on exactly what you want to get out of it. As always, time management is key. Students are going to be mad if you're late to office hours and professors are going to be mad if you show up late to lecture. You should always try your best to be accountable as a TA because when you don't respect people's time, they won't respect yours. If you have to reschedule or skip office hours or a tutorial or lecture, sending a message beforehand to cancel can really avoid some negative situations. I said what you want from me, I get money. I said what you need from me, I get honeys. I said what you want from me, I get money. I said what you need from me, I get honey I'm a just because you don't have to complete the assignments for a grade as a TA or you've already done them before doesn't mean you shouldn't re-review any assignments you haven't looked at in a while before you go to office hours to teach them. Even if you understand the core material, being able to answer any question on the spot can really develop students' trust in you. Students like to believe that TAs know all the answers and obviously you don't because quite frankly, the professors don't even know all the answers. But if you're prepared, it can make it seem like you do. It also allows you to master the material that you're teaching, which I think is the best thing that you can get out of being a TA. Now, on to what I did wrong. The first thing that I always did wrong was allowing the schedule to deviate. I mentioned this before, but time management and preparation are both really key in being a good TA. However, sticking to the plan that you communicate is also really important. If you regularly go over the time that you've allotted for office hours, students can come to expect that you'll be there for longer than you said you would. The moment that you actually have to step back and be on par with the schedule, students can get upset. You really need to execute actions that allow students to know what to expect so they can't expect more or less from you. This allows people to come prepared and makes everybody's life easier. One thing I realized is that a lot of people go over office hours because, especially in computer science courses, there are hundreds of students. Hundreds of students will yield hundreds of questions, and if you're only one of five TAs, or even just one of two TAs on an office hour, which is common for computer science classes, it may be really hard to answer individual questions. One way that I learned to avoid this was by asking group-wide questions and tackling questions one section at a time. There's typically less questions than students in the class, so if you tackle your office hours by separating the problems into sections, and maybe going over them two or three times per office hour, you can really save a lot of time. If there are multiple TAs at the office hour, then maybe one TA can do these group kind of questions and the other TA can do one-on-one -on -one questions, debugging, things like that. This doesn't have to be the plan that you decide to use, but a consistent schedule for office hours can allow the students to know what to expect from you and allow you to know exactly what to prepare for the office hour. Of course, if the course material is really tough and I honestly felt bad for the students, I would stay over extra, but you shouldn't make that a regular thing. I'm never the one. I'm never the one. I'm never the one. I'm never the one. The 
The next mistake that I made all the time was ignoring the prerequisites. I think this is probably the core of why people hated me as a TA. Even though students have taken the prerequisites, they might not know in depth the details of all the things that go into those prerequisites. And sometimes that knowledge is necessary for your course. This was the case for me in like 50% of my undergrad courses. Especially in a group setting, it can be difficult for students to speak up because some people might feel embarrassed that they don't actually know the prerequisites. But in reality, many more people than you think don't actually have that prior knowledge. A good thing to do is that if you're in a group setting, asking the students to explain the prerequisites to you or explain whatever background information is necessary to solve the problem so that if they give a good explanation, then you can re-explain it to the entire group and then everybody can get the benefit of being on the same page as to what you're talking about. It's really bad to just throw out buzzwords and expect people to know what you're talking about because oftentimes people will just nod and really not know what you're talking about and never go to you for help again. Asking students to explain those basics or helping them understand what those basics are can really break the ice and also help you reduce the amount of ineffective teaching time you're giving. You didn't like the way I stare. You didn't like the way I dare. You didn't like me for myself. I honestly feel like everybody struggles with consistent time management. I did mention this earlier, but I honestly think that this is the most important thing and the biggest mistake that many TAs make. You can honestly get away with the majority of your TA ship without doing very much external work, but one thing that you can't get away from is grading. If you have classes with hundreds of students and you're grading dozens to hundreds of homework assignments every single week, or maybe you're grading that monthly, whatever it is, you're doing a lot of grading. Oftentimes there are not complete auto graders for every single assignment. So this is where time management comes in. Making sure that you give yourself enough time to thoroughly grade every assignment is important. It's really not the best thing to go through assignments too quickly and it's honestly a little bit unethical to not correctly grade students assignments because at the end of the day, this is their degree. Yes, mistakes will happen, but if if you give yourself enough time, you can minimize those mistakes. And also, you definitely want to give feedback on homework assignments in a timely manner because the students will get mad. Honestly, this entire video is just steps on how to not annoy your students. Undergrads, it's not that deep. But a quick recap, three tips to make your life easier. One, recognize what you're in it for and focus on that. Two, manage your time effectively. And three, prepare with the course material beforehand because it'll only make you a better teacher. And three mistakes to avoid, respect others' time, but also execute actions that make others respect your time as well. Don't always assume that everybody knows your prerequisites because it can sometimes hinder effective assistance. And again, don't manage your time poorly. I guess time management is key. I just wanna say, one review that I got told me that I was doing the bare minimum as a TA. Sometimes the bare minimum includes going to lecture, holding office hours, going to instructor meetings, holding extra teaching and review sessions, answering questions on online forums like Piazza, and grading hundreds of assignments every single week. And a lot of times, TAs are also full-time students. So if you're a TA, I'm just saying, sometimes the bare minimum is all you can do. So don't feel bad. That's it for this video, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later. I wanna take you home to mama. I wanna buy you diamond rings. Make sure that you're happy. Show you everything.